We are back on Morning Line. It's our final segment this morning with our guests. We have Clint Kelly with us, malpractice attorney. Kathy Farrell is a registered nurse who works with him in his office, kind of takes the, uh, the phone calls and, and sifts through them to see whether or not you have a legitimate case. All right, now, that whole pill case that you, everyone out there at one time or another is getting a prescription for something. Some people take them on a regular basis. So, Clint. I, I go, I get my jar of pills if I need something, you know, whatever it may be, and I read the label and I ask them, you know, what do I have to do with this? They give it to me. I completely trust that the pill in the bottle is what's on the label, and I hope 99% of the time it is. <laughs> is there any way the consumer can protect what happened to your client? I mean, Nick, there's a, a PDR book that you can buy. You know, the PDR. I've seen that. That. Yeah. that. Is that a book that has the picture of the pills? It does. You can go check in. And, who it, does it, that? It, it, that's what I'm saying. That you you ask the question. Okay. I, okay. That's unless it. Unless you know a better way, Kathy. I don't know any other way that you could protect yourself if you see a different looking pill in there. Well. Perhaps there's two ways. First way would be to look it up in the PDR. The second way is if you see a different pill, uh, go to your pharmacist and ask your pharmacist again, are you sure this is what I'm supposed to be taking? You know, is it another generic form or is this some other type pill? Other than that, I can't imagine how you would know. Okay. Have you handled many cases like this or are they fairly unusual? This is the third one I've had in the last five years. Third one. Okay. Three and five years. Now, the, the, and the, the one I had before this was one where it was the drug was dispensed it, the drug was right but the dosage was wrong oh okay he got the dosage wrong and she was taking tramadol and she had a seizure disorder from it because the, the dose was too high too high but this does happen and i think it's going to continue to happen with the way things are set up at our pharmacy right now because i, I don't i just don't think the either the systems are in place and there's just going to be a margin for error and this is the way it's going to be mm -hmm. or the volume has gotten to be so great at these pharmacies that it's hard to put in yeah. the, the, the type of work to make sure that these mistakes aren't made. And you think it is um, human error every time? Yeah. Is, it, is it blatant negligence? Is it an honest mistake? What is it? Yeah, if you're a pharmacist and you're looking at a pills being dispensed in a bottle and you can look at it and if you miss it, it's on you. I mean, mm -hmm. there may be a okay. computer system responsible. I'm going to learn more about this because I'm going to find out in the course of this case exactly how this happened, and I'm uh, hopefully learn everything I can about it. But at the end of the day, my pharmacist expert tells me you have to look at the pills as dispensed in the bottle before you basically sign off on it, put that little sticker and get rid of it. That's just what you're supposed to you do. You know what that scenario reminds me of? The scene in It's a Wonderful Life. When, when, when the, the young the boy works in the pharmacy and his boss, you know, had just lost his son and was out of his head and not thinking clearly and filled the wrong prescription. Yeah, come on, you guys have seen a, it's it a wonderful was, it life. It was rat poison. Remember? Yes, it he was goes, rat poison. <laughs> rat Because remember, he slapped him in the head yeah, and said, why, what are you doing? And then he realizes, oh my gosh, I would have killed this woman if you didn't catch that. Right. So you think, it just made me think about the distractions. We're all human, but there's no excuse for this if it can hurt someone, but it, it happens. I might get one of those books. What did you say it's called? The pill book? Physician's Desk Reference. Desk yes. Reference. It's huge, about this big. It's got pictures all kinds of, of all pills. the pills. Yeah. And it, it comes come out in. every year because yeah. new medicines mm -hmm. every year. Have to change. All right, let's go to Lee. Lee, good morning. Good morning. Hi, Lee. How can we help you? I was just curious if you had something happen, say a loved one pass away because of somebody's negligence, is it possible to do a civil suit even years later, or how does that work? A civil suit. Well, well, he's asking the question. How, how long has it been, Lee, since there's been uh, wrongdoing? Over five years. Was there a? Uh, does the case involve a, uh, a foreign object in the body? Does not. Does the case? It, it involves a prescription uh, uh, being, you know wrongfully done or, or something similar to that. Like what we were just talking about. Do you do you know whether there was any fraud involved? And what I mean by that is did someone on the part of the health care provider or the pharmacy uh, try to mislead you or mislead members of the family as to what happened or what the cause was? Well, the cause of death was uh, um, from a, uh, the heart stopping, but, uh, you know, nothing else was said about it. The odds are, my legal opinion would be based on just that information that the claim would be time barred. Now, after five years, there's really only two exceptions around the statute of limitations. The first exception is if they leave a foreign object in your body, okay. if they leave a sponge or um, uh, 
hemostats, things like that, and your body's mm -hmm. detected later, then you have a claim from the date that you learn that That's those are yeah. correct. The second exception, it's a hard one to prove, is that the health care provider actively tried to conceal information from the patient that would have led to the patient's discovery of the wrongdoing. Absent those two things, after five years, the claim's dead. Lee, was this pretty much cut and dry? I mean, you realize that they gave your loved one a wrong prescription? Yes. I mean, you know that. So what was, can you tell me what was he supposed to, or she supposed to get, and what did she end up with? Well, it was, uh, um, I want to say it was um, Bavix, and the prescription that was substituted for that was Losartan. Losartan. I've been told they're similar or kind in the same family, but they don't do the same function. Uh -oh. Lee, what was the reason why uh, an attorney wasn't consulted and a lawsuit wasn't filed? I didn't realize it until uh, years later. Huh. But, you know, it, just recently, within the last year, I've come to understand that maybe the wrong prescription was dispensed or, or given to her, you know, for that. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I'm glad you called, Lee. I, I wish I had better a better opinion for you, but I mean, Lee, is the, the, the reason why this is so important for everyone who's watching this show to, to understand Lee's yeah. situation is how it, it's just vital that if you suspect anything has gone wrong, pick up the phone and call. It costs nothing for someone to call me and they get referred to Kathy and have Kathy evaluate it and give me an opinion. That costs the patient nothing, right. and it will cost the patient nothing throughout the entire process unless I recover money and then at least the patient has the peace of mind but they're just unfortunately people in Lee's situation who and perhaps Lee just didn't know until well, I was years say, later. Yeah right afterwards you think you had no suspicion of it maybe and he comes to this. It almost seems to me like in the event of a loved one who dies somewhat unexpectedly just make that call even if you don't have any suspicions. It's just, you know what, well this was something of a surprise. There may be a very good reason for why this happened, but I'm going to call anyway, even though I have no suspicion. That's a, that's a great point, Nick. Okay. That, that really ought to be the guiding principle. If, so, if a loved one dies unexpectedly, that's, that's a great term to use, okay. that's when you pick up the phone and you make a call just to make sure everything's on the up and up. And my guiding principle in addition to that is if I've got someone in the hospital who's 55 or younger and dies in the hospital, I presume it's negligence until proven otherwise. That may not be fair, Kathy, but that's what I think yeah. because I've seen too many people in the hospital at that age or younger who've passed away and there's almost always some screw up. Because if you're that young, you're, you're generally going to be a little more fit and healthy, yes. right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. They're much healthier at that age, and and you know if and if it's unexpected now, if they already have a diagnosis that you know is is one that's mm -hmm. somewhat limiting, sure, a cancer or you know severe heart disease or kidney disease or an organ that's failing, that's one thing. But if they've gone in for for something routine, maybe a routine surgery, or um, they've just gone in to be checked. Mm -hmm. You know, to have you know certain tests run to make sure everything's functioning correctly, and they die while they're there, and it's totally unexpected because you had no disease process that was going to kill you. Yeah. Then yes, I think you should be investigating what happened. And a lot of times, something that could not be anticipated happened. But what happens is that the physicians and the nurses don't educate the families. They don't talk to the families. They don't educate the families. The families are left not having answers to their questions. And so they automatically, you know, have to assume that something was done wrong. Sometimes it's something that can be explained, but the doctors and the nurses don't take time to talk a, to the family about it. There may be a very good it. reason for that then, That's right? I mean, right. so ask questions if you can. Just always ask questions. Always ask questions. Always take questions to your doctor's visits. Write things down. Mm -hmm. You get into the moment, you forget what you were going to ask your doctor. And so I always think that people that are going to their doctor, if they're really concerned about something, write the questions down oh, so I they do. won't forget them. Because I'll forget sometimes to ask. Right? Right? Absolutely. That's a good idea. Absolutely. Write your questions down so you don't get confused or you don't get to thinking about something else and then you don't get your questions answered. Yeah. yeah. 
write them down, make them stop and talk to you. Yeah. And, and Nick, an, an amendment to that principle you mentioned about an unexpected death is an unexpected outcome, one that's really different from what was expected because right now, uh, Kathy and I are, are having a case evaluated by a young man who went in for a, a kidney procedure and uh, has come out almost a vegetable uh, at a hospital here in town and that's something that was not clearly mm -hmm. expected and may be the result yeah. of of negligence for failure to prevent a, a deadly blood clot. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, the one high-profile case we talked about where it was an unexpected result was Joan Rivers. Which, by the way, yes. I don't know right. if that's been resolved, but he, he talked to me a lot yeah. about that one where she went in for what should right. have been a fairly routine procedure, and the problem was it was done in some doctor's office, right? Yeah. And she ends up dying right. abruptly. Were and her, Were her doctor taking a selfie during the procedure, which was Because that would have been settled by yeah. now for a yeah, lot it, of money, I would yeah, imagine. They don't, we don't know how much, but we do know it was settled favorably to uh, her daughter. Yeah. Real quickly, as we wrap things up, uh, the phone number, and we'll put it up again at the end for folks, but there it is, uh, 824-3703. Three, the number, area code 615. He's over there on East Main Street in Hendersonville, the Kelly firm. And uh, of course, if you don't talk to him, which you probably won't, you will talk to Kathy. And it uh, doesn't cost you anything to make that call and find That's out. Right. Ask to speak to Kathy, and she'll take your information down. And she'll report back to me. And yes, Nick, it costs nothing. It's yeah. absolutely free. Kathy, nice to meet you. Thank you. Maybe we'll see you again, here. Clint, as always, my friend. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Appreciate it. Be back with the programming note. More of that number right after this.